G'day. A friend of mine came in with a, a projector leg, um, which had, was, uh, there was a pair of them, and this is the good one, uh, but one that was broken, and asked whether I could make up another one for him. Uh, give anything a go, I thought to myself, so uh, that's what I'm doing. I wasn't expecting to make a video out of this, uh, but as I was going along I thought actually there's a few uh, tips on machining plastic and, and that sort of thing that might be worth knowing. So um, I sort of strung something together, so I hope it's of use. Uh, see how we go. This is the subject of um, today's video. It's an adjustable foot from a projector or something like that, uh, and it consists of a, of a lock nut plus a, um, an adjustable uh, screw. And then there's also down here a, a, a stop which has a, a swivel on it. Now, one of the, there's a pair of them and one of them broke. And so I was asked, well, can I make up another one? And uh, the answer is yes. But um, one of the problems with saying it's made out of plastic is there's a whole bunch of things that, that plastic is and isn't. This, is, this to me looks like a glass reinforced nylon. Um, and it's got various properties which I can't get from a machinable grade of, of material so I'm using some POM uh, and that's going to have a whole different range of, of um, issues with it but I thought I'd, I'd lay down a few general rules about machining uh, plastic uh, even though you know that term is so wide it's a bit like saying can you make a new one of these out of metal for me there are a uh, whole variety of plastics and some of th some of them have got characteristics that make them uh, good to machine and others uh, make them absolutely atrocious. So something like a polyethylene, um, it's a waxy plastic, you see it for shop chopping boards and that sort of thing, but machining that stuff is a little bit on the awkward side because um, it can be very stringy, it can have very tough chips and all that sort of thing. But one of the big things about plastic is that when you're machining it, you want to try and take a reasonably deep uh, depth of cut and a reasonably coarse feed because some of these plastics um, will will fluff up. If you just take a very light cut you get lots of fluffy sort of stuff around the place. If you take a decent sort of cut you've got a chance of of getting the um, the chips in a, in, a, in a handleable way. As you just saw, um, I was taking a, a quite a, an aggressive feed, it was hand fed, uh, and quite an aggressive depth of cut there, just so that I had chips coming off. If I took a, um, a more relaxed effort at, on that, I'd have lots of stringy chips like that. And so uh, to avoid that, heavy feeds um, and reasonable depth of cut. When you're coming to do a finishing cut, sometimes you can't help that, but um, you know, you, you may have to take a light cut there or slow your feed to get a decent finish, but certainly for roughing out, you can take some quite deep cuts. Another property that some plastics have is a thing called notch sensitivity. Um, and what that basically means is there's a sharp corner there that tends to con concentrate stress and so uh, can break more easily. That could be what happened here. Um, bottom of the thread, sharp corner, and it's, it's snapped. It happens. Uh, so whenever possible, you know, uh, if this was a piece of metal and I, I had something going up to it, I might, I might be tempted to come in with a, with a you know, sharp uh, pointed tool and clean that up and give myself a square corner. With plastics, you're better off leaving that round if you can. Uh, I may have to doctor that when I, um, when I come further down the track, but, you know, what I'd like to do is leave that with just the, the tool radius, which is, I think it's 0.8. Um, of a millimetre, but that gives it a, a little bit of a chance against uh, stress there. As you can see, generally plastics can be uh, uh, have a thread put on them, tapped, etc. However, a couple of things there. One is that because of the nature of the plastics, uh, or of, of some plastics, the, the 
chips are generally long and stringy and so um, they can build up inside the, uh, the die. The other thing to bear in mind is that there are some plastics which are very sensitive to solvent attack and so if your dies have got a trace of you know Trefilex or Venom or whatever your favourite uh, tapping compound is uh, you might find that while you can tap it the thing you know 24 hours later will, will disintegrate because the, the solvent's got in. Uh, now if you're thinking oh well I'll just get my, my uh, taps and, and, and or dyes and give them a rinse and some solvent well the solvent can do the same thing so you have to be very very careful with that um, you know you really want uh, clean dry dyes if you need a bit of um, uh, lubricant to, to help uh, maybe something like some dishwashing detergent or something like that uh, just to, to give you something a little bit, bit slippery. Uh, having said that uh, a lot of plastics can be dry tapped. We just put a knurl on this bit of plastic uh, and as you can see that that works quite nicely however one thing I, I couldn't quite work out for a moment is why the knurl kept feeding that way didn't have any feed in and it's another one of these things that plastics will do. You might just be able to see a scuff mark there and that's basically the plastic is walking its way out of the chuck uh, because of the forces applied so that's another thing that you need to bear or be mindful of is that um, you know plastics will tend to um, move uh, on you whereas if you know if this was a bit of metal I could I could lock this up everything would be wonderful whereas uh, because it's plastic it'll move it'll it'll squunch around the place and so it can it can walk out the chuck so uh, that's another thing you need to be careful with with your clamping. Um, you can't clamp too hard, otherwise you distort the material. But if you don't clamp uh, well enough, uh, you may find that um, it moves on you. This is a piece of uh, polyethylene, so different sort of plastic to the uh, to the POM that I'm I'm doing now. I have to put a counter bore in the back there. If this was a steel part, I'd just put that into a collet chuck and and be done with it. That'd that'd be fine. Here I'm actually. Uh, making up a nut that goes with it uh, and that will, fingers crossed, I've got a little bit of a counter bore there to, to relieve the threads but I'm hoping that that will cushion the threads enough that I can put that, that counter bore in but uh, you know not, not damage the part. Another thing too with, which I was reminded of by this polyethylene, you can see the you know the way it, it strings and, and pulls there um, some plastics like this will grab so you have to be really careful uh, if you're drilling say um, because the part will grab and pull itself up the drill um, so yeah peck drilling is a, is a good idea um, but having things firmly clamped down and uh, even to the extent when I'm using the drill and the tail stock I'll actually grab hold of the chuck and hold the chuck into the taper if I think it could pull out because um, you don't want your holes going over depth we're now up to the, uh, the the tricky part, which is this piece in here. Um, now, two things about that before I, I, I go anywhere with it, with it. One is there's a slight recess in the top there, and that's for a rubber foot. Um, now, I just went down to Clark Rubber and picked up some rubber feet because you never know whether that's a custom size that you won't be able to get or whatever. So, one of the, f the first things you need to do is yeah check that you can actually get the, the feet to go in there and uh, I bought a little hemispherical one uh, that won't be too difficult I'll just cut the cut the sprue off that and, and, and tape that in that should be fine the other thing to note about this part is that there's a, a hollow in there now injection molding part designers like to keep a reasonably constant wall thickness uh, because otherwise the part can distort so that hole is more than likely there just so that the um, the, the injection moulding of this part is, uh, how would you say, you know, to, to standard, to, to, to normal practice. So I may not need to put that in there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I won't, uh, but I'll just, you know, think about that one a little bit more. The other end has got a funny fitting on it, which is basically a little barb arrangement with the slot down the middle. So I'm going to turn that up as round and then put a, put a slot in there with a or a hacksaw blade or a, or a milling cutter or something it doesn't need to be much it just needs to be enough to spring um, the depth is probably important people spend years doing plastics design and getting the spring on these things just right so um, I'll be making it that 
that deep, maybe a little bit more, we'll see how we go, but certainly no shallower th than that. As fitted to the, the part, uh, the blue is the piece that I'm just about to make, and you can see how those barbs just sort of hook into a, a, a slight undercut. Uh, that's five and a half diameter. This is this is four through here, so um, you know it's just enough to, to to click in, and then the rubber foot goes in here, sort of thing. A couple more nasty things about plastic. One is that there's they tend to be very staticky, and so you'll find that you'll get lots of little bits just hanging on to to work, uh, which can get in the way sometimes. You can't see what the tool's doing and all that sort of thing. Um, I thought I'd show this because. It's one of those things that you know you need to um, to know about, and sometimes people know about it, and some people sometimes people don't. I need to put uh, a 19 millimeter long diameter four uh, straight on here. Now, injection molding easy, not a problem, and that's how these parts were originally made. For machining, it's a little bit more difficult. So there's a there's a rule of some thumb that says your stick out should be th maximum three times your diameter. So I've gone back around about. Uh, 12 uh, that's diameter 5 and that's diameter 4 and so I'm going to shape the, the, the tip of this it's got a bullet head on it uh, and then I'm going to take that back another uh, what seven eight millimeters to get the uh, the amount of stick out that I've, I've, I'm chasing All right then I can do the rest of the part here um, do whatever needs to be done there and and um, you know, I'm, I'm away. All I have to do then is, is basically put a, a slit in that so that it'll, it'll click in. From a, uh, a pile of parts plus a good one, uh, I've now made uh, two good ones. I've even fitted rubber tips to these ones, so that's all, all fine. Uh, they should be pretty much ready to go straight onto the machine. Oh, one final tip too. Uh, plast plastic, thermoplastics don't, doesn't like heat. So if you need to uh, apply coolant, by all means, if plain water is fine, but Keep the, keep the temperature down, stop it melting. Sharp tools, all that sort of thing. Anyway, hope these tips have been useful and uh, we'll see you for the next video.